Welcome back, and this is part three of making a dune sandworm in Blender 4.0. So if you haven't already seen parts one and two where we did the modeling and then the rigging, go ahead and check that out. This is gonna be part three where we'll be doing um, the texturing. Now the file you see here is actually my original. Um, so like I said, we won't be creating the environment or anything like that or doing the animation, but we will now be adding at least some procedural materials and setting up some lighting so you guys can have a worm that you can finally show to somebody or animate it in a project if you want. So let's jump in to part three and I hope you guys enjoy. So now let's get into doing some basic materials and lighting. So let's go to our render properties. Let's make sure to change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And under your render um, settings here, make sure to go to the max samples. Let's go for now something like 70, should be fine. And then we're gonna go Z and let's just add in a camera and press zero to go into your camera view. And then you can just move your camera back however you want. I'm just gonna go for something like this for now. And then let's go back to our render settings. Just go down to film and just enable transparent. And now if we go shift A, we can go to our light options, add in an area light and let's go G and move it up. Let's make it something like 4,000 and let's just increase that size. Make it nice and big. And for now, let's just have it kind of coming from the top and then shift D to duplicate, have one kind of coming from the side. So in our camera view, we can go Z and go rendered. Now we can see our worm. I'm gonna go control B and just drag to limit the rendering to the camera. And now let's select our worm. Let's go into our shading workspace. And in fact, in here, let's just actually quickly tab into edit mode. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna to go to the bottom here. And we're gonna go shift alt and just left click on an edge and should select the whole edge running through to the back. And let's just go control E and let's go mark seam. And now if we go A to select all of it and we go over here to UV editing, we can press U on our keyboard and go unwrap. And it's just gonna unwrap the whole worm like this for us. Um, you know, it should be okay for what we're doing for now. Let's just go back to our shading workspace. With our worm here, let's just click new and let's just go shift A search and get a noise texture. Let's take the color and plug it into the base color here for now. And we're gonna go Shift A search and type in texture, and then type in co. And let's get a texture coordinate. And let's take the UV and plug it into the vector here. And then let's go Shift A search and get a mapping by typing in mapping. Place it over here on this cable. And now if we go Z and we go rendered, we can see our noise texture here. But let's go Shift A search and get a color ramp. Place it next to the noise texture on this cable. And then let's drag these two values together so we get more contrast like so. So now we can see we have our patches here from our texture, noise texture here, but we can take the scale and drag it up a bit, maybe to like 15. And then let's take our detail, drag that all the way up and our roughness, let's drag that about almost up to one, something like this. And now we have this nice kind of looking texture. All we have to do now is come over here to our color ramp. Let's grab this black value and let's change it to something like a earthy kind of brown color. And then let's take the white value here and make it kind of like a sort of a desert sand kind of color like this. You guys kind of see where we're going with that. Now we can go shift A search and get a color ramp again. And this one, we're gonna just take, plug the color into here from the color, the noise texture. Let's just plug this color into the top roughness input and then drag these values closer together to give us a little bit more contrast as well. It's kind of something like this, just to give us that kind of um, speckled look with our roughness here. You can't really see it at the moment, but if we go Shift A search and get a bump node, we can plug this color into the height, and then take this normal and plug it into the normal of our principled. And let's take that strength down a bit, something like this. And now you can really see that sort of sand sandworm texture here. So I think you could leave it at that if you wanted to, and that already looks really good. But if you really want to up your game, you could kind of duplicate your noise texture and make sure the mapping is still going into it. And then you can go shift A search and let's get a displace. And we're gonna take the displacement here and plug it into the material output. And then let's take our noise texture color and plug it into the height. And then let's just duplicate this color ramp and place it on here. 
And if we were to kind of isolate this color ramp here, we can see this is what we have. So I'm gonna just drag these values closer together. I'm gonna to bring down the detail quite a bit. And let's just go and duplicate this mapping node and actually place it over here and have the UV going into the vector here, like so. And then we can take the scale here and I think we're gonna go with the X here and just kind of really drag it to kind of create these long stretches like this. And let's take the scale down to something like five or maybe I'll just drag it up a bit. Yeah, 14 should be okay. And let's just take that detail just up or maybe down just a bit. So something like this. And now um, let's plug the principle back into the surface here. And now we kind of have this displacement happening here. And we can always come here and mess around with this on the color ramp. Maybe I will bring that detail up a bit. Just kind of adding this kind of grain running along it like this. And then maybe just bring that scale down to 0.3 or maybe even 0.1 or maybe even 0.03 if it's really strong. Yeah, something like that looks really good for the displacement. So now we have this really cool kind of sandworm texture that I think kind of represents the one we see in a movie quite well. Um, I might just go here to the scale, make it five. Yeah, that's looking really good. Okay, there we have our sandworm. So now what we have to do is bring back our tooth from the previous part. So we create it. The one that's getting reference for a particle system. Just give that one a material. This is called tooth. And let's just go to our base color and make that kind of like a sandy kind of white color almost like that. And that's all we're willing to do. Might even go to the subsurface and give it a weight of one. But I think that's all we really need. And I'm gonna grab my rig and press M and go new collection and just call it rig. And that way we can always take that rig um, and have it as a collection. We can just turn it off when we don't need it. And I'm also gonna turn the tooth off as well there. We just need to see the worm over here and our lights. And I might just grab these two lights and the camera, press M and create a new collection and call it um, stage. Go okay. So now we have our stage here, we can turn on and off. And the main collection here, I'll just call it worm. And that's where we have our teeth and our worm. So these two objects here. So that's everything kind of organized at the moment. So let's go back to our layout. And now you can grab your camera and you can always position it however you want for your worm. So I'm gonna go something like this. You can rotate your lighting situation just to kind of get the results you're looking for as well. And you can always, you know, use your rig now if you have to and just kind of pose in um, pose mode. You kind of pose your worm if you have to, just to kind of get something a little bit more interesting. Something like this maybe, looks really cool. And then you can go shift A, add in a plane, scale it up. This can kind of be your desert environment if you wanted it to. And then, you know, pose your worm on top of that. So you can kind of you know, make it kind of come out of the ground a little bit. And be as creative as you want with your sandworm placement. But I'm kind of gonna go with something like this. You just have the camera kind of low, just looking up at the worm, make it look just kind of a little bit um, bigger. Something like that. And um, let's just go ahead and look at that in the render. It looks pretty good. I might just have to grab this ground, give that a material and just kind of make it look deserty, like so. Um, you could obviously add a desert texture to the ground, but let's just go ahead as well, go to our world properties and let's give this a sky texture and let's make the strength something like 0.3 or 0.2, maybe 0.1. And you could also mess around with the sun rotation a little bit. And now let's just save and go render and give this a test render. And there we have our sandworm. So what I'm gonna quickly do, because um, the tutorial is already kind of, I think, focused mainly on the worm and I've kind of accomplished what I set out to do. I'm gonna quickly go ahead and pause this video and I'm gonna go ahead, just add a desert texture to the ground and manipulate it a little bit. And I'll add in a nice HDRI and then I'll show you guys what the result looks like.
So I went ahead and just added a little bit more of the materials, added in a HDRI, um, nothing too crazy. And you can see here is the sandworm. Um, yeah, it's been a fun project. I really hope you guys have enjoyed following along. I will be uploading my final result to Patreon and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.